Andrew Huberman is a neuroscientist with a podcast called Huberman Labs. This podcast focuses on bringing scientific information to a normal person like me. And his morning routine has gone viral for good reason. It helps you be alert, have sustained energy levels, be productive, be focused, and sleep well at night. And it all starts with viewing sunlight first thing in the morning. He also recommends writing down the time that you wake up. I have an aura ring, so it gives me all sorts of sleep data. He also likes to pair this with forward ambulation, aka just a walk. It's not about burning calories, it's about getting in optic flow and something kind of sciencey that he explains, but it also helps you get alert and not be as anxious. The sunlight needs to be viewed with no sunglasses and don't look directly at the sun, but just be outside with the sun. It is a powerful stimulus to wake you up and stay awake and sleep good at night. It's actually crazy how now that I'm out here on my walk about 10 minutes in, I do feel very awake. I feel very fresh. It's also a little bit chilly this morning, but I can hear the birds chirping even through my headphones and the sun is actually rising right now. Waking up at sunrise feels so good and I did not expect to feel so alert and so awake simply by just getting outside. I'm also the only one out here walking right now. Not only is this my favorite part of the morning routine, but Andrew Huberman has himself says this is the most important part. He recommends doing this at least 80% of your life because it promotes such positive mental health and it spikes your cortisol first thing in the morning, which I guess apparently is a good thing for your health. You may have noticed I didn't have a coffee or an energy drink or anything while I was on that walk. And as someone who loves caffeine, this is the hardest part. We are actually going to delay our caffeine by 90 to 120 minutes. And we are going to first drink 16 to 32 ounces of water with sea salt. It actually doesn't taste too bad and it helps with hydration. He also recommends using a electrolyte packet instead. He uses LMNT. I'm just going with the sea salt. It's actually kind of good. Don't mind it. A few things at this time of day. I'm taking from two different podcasts. One is Andrew Huberman explaining his personal morning routine, afternoon routine, evening routine. The second is a sleep toolkit episode, which makes your entire morning centered around having good sleep the next night. I'm trying to find a good balance between the two, and luckily he does incorporate most of the sleep toolkit in his morning routine. Something he didn't mention in his personal morning routine was deliberate cold exposure, but that is mentioned in the sleep toolkit. The reason for this is to raise your body temperature, which will help with alertness. So there are actually three things you can do. You can either do a full workout or a light workout like a walk, deliberate cold exposure, whether that's a cold tub or hopping in the cold shower, or actually eating, which is counterintuitive because Andrew Huberman actually fasts until about noon every day. So I already went on my walk and I will do a cold shower, but not until after my actual full workout. Like I mentioned, we're delaying our caffeine by 90 to 120 minutes, which is way past my little walk that I did this morning. So instead, we're just gonna continue drinking our water. And the reason for this is that it helps avoid an afternoon crash. And even if you feel like caffeine doesn't affect your sleep, it actually is affecting your sleep cycles. And because of that, it's important to avoid caffeine after two to 4 p.m. So to summarize, we're not drinking caffeine, we're drinking that water, and we're gonna do fasting till about 11 or 12, which I usually do anyway. So during this period, we are going to do what is called deep work for 90 minutes. When you do this deep work actually depends on when you woke up, which is why we wrote that down. So basically four to six hours after your temperature minimum is when you wanna start this 90 minutes and your temperature minimum is two hours after you wake up. In this video, I actually had about an hour until it was that range of time. So instead I'm going to be doing my Bible study until deep work time. And I thought this was really cool. I recently listened to a podcast of Andrew Huberman. He didn't necessarily say he was a Christian, but he said that he prays, he believes in God, and he's actually reading the Bible for the first time. So of course that was amazing to hear, and this is your sign to also give the Bible and Jesus a try. Now it is time for my 90 minute intense, hard focused work time. Something mentioned was white noise. So I have my speaker here because he says not to use headphones and I'm just gonna play some chill lo-fi while I get to work. Starting my 90 minute timer, let's go. There are a few protocols, as Andrew Huberman always calls it, to this 90 minute deep work. So you wanna have your desktop, laptop, whatever, slightly elevated above eye level. Mine's not in this video, but I move it in just a second. You wanna have low level white noise, like I mentioned, and you don't wanna be wearing headphones. He also recommends turning your phone completely off, zero distractions. Your brain should be like fully in work mode. No distractions, 
don't even get up to go to the bathroom if you can avoid it. Basically, at all costs, you want to be sitting there working for 90 minutes straight with no caffeine. Yeah, it actually wasn't as bad as I thought. It was pretty easy and I got a lot of work done. Okay, it has officially been 90 minutes. I do feel relatively more awake. It was kind of a struggle at the beginning of that 90 minutes, but towards the end, it started to get easier and I was kind of flying through my work. But the best part about this 90 minutes being over is that I can now have coffee. Ah, so good. Next, he recommends working out anywhere between 45 to 60 minutes, five times a week. He likes to do a mix of strength and endurance training, and I'm just enjoying my coffee and checking my phone finally for the first time before I head to the gym. Now that we've gotten our workout away, we're hydrated and officially finally caffeinated, we're gonna go to the gym. Exercise is a huge topic, but to keep it simple, Andrew Huberman recommends doing a good split of endurance and strength training and switching which one is more because he goes five times a week. So you might do two strength, three endurance, and then after a few months, swap that to three strength, two endurance days. He recommends at least 45 minutes and the most 60 minutes. So that's what I did today, but I actually had a shorter workout than that. Oops, but it was an upper body day. Since I couldn't have caffeine this morning, here are four highly caffeinated drinks. This has nothing to do with Andrew Huberman's morning routine. In fact, he would probably consider this like a cardinal sin, the amount of caffeine I'm going to ingest. I won't drink them all, but Seven Brew was having a filetre day. I couldn't say no. So we've got matcha, coffee, and an energy drink. I've never had matcha in my entire life. This is the Cloud9 matcha. Taste test. Whoa, okay. I think I like matcha, hold on. We have finally made it to lunchtime. It's about 12.30 and we'll be breaking our fast. You thought we could just eat? Absolutely not. With Andrew Huberman, there are some protocols. So he actually does recommend that your lunchtime is a low carb meal followed by a five to 10 minute walk. He actually recommends always going on a little bit of a walk after you eat. I've listened to a lot of his podcasts and it doesn't seem like he's really a believer in keto or carnivore, but he does believe in fasting. So he usually doesn't eat till about 11 or 12. And like I said, for lunch, he does recommend a low carb meal. I personally do keto most of the time so this was super easy for me this is one of my go-to meal preps and i did forget to do my walk but that is okay because we are gonna hop right into our deliberate cold exposure now for the part i've been looking forward to the least a cold shower <laughs> It is 2.30 and at this point we've pretty much done everything for Andrew Huberman's morning routine bleeding into the afternoon. So far the results are pretty good. I don't feel like I'm having a dip in energy. I thought I'd be pretty tired because I woke up earlier than usual, but I do feel like I've accomplished a lot and I feel really energized and ready to go for the rest of the day. If you follow this routine and you have like a normal nine to five job, you would have to wake up at like four or 5 a.m., especially if you're following his exact like, don't do your 90 minute work until four to five hours after your lowest temperature, like all that kind of stuff, you won't have time. But I do think you can take from this routine the things that work for you and implement them into your life. Andrew Huberman always talks about how these are just tools and you can use some or all of them. But the one thing that he really wants everyone to do that I am 100% gonna stick with is the waking up and getting morning sunlight along with a walk. I really do feel like that woke me up and got me energized for the day. I will not be doing a cold shower. And to summarize the things you can do for better sleep, you can manipulate light, temperature, caffeine, and food. Like I said, all of these can be chosen or layered for alertness and better sleep. Honestly, what Andrew Huberman does is amazing. I really value his podcast. He has topics on almost everything that you could think of, including productivity, alertness, motivation, all those kinds of things. So if you guys want to get educated and potentially change your life, check out Andrew Huberman's podcast. It's called Huberman Labs. Since filming this video a few weeks ago, 
know I have been doing my morning walks every single day and I haven't really done anything else but I do feel like that has made a difference and thanks for following along my journey trying out his morning routine he can probably explain it better than me and all the science behind it so just listen to him and not me thanks for watching I'll see you guys in the next one bye